All right, guys, so maybe this is an optimistic review. I don't know if that's, like, what I want to name it yet, because it's not like she's bad, but it's not like she's good or new. Um, So you may have gotten her about, like, two months ago, because she was from the bounty hunt and she had an era saga, so extra incentive, extra incentive to have already had her. Uh, I decided not to go for that. I forget why. But I got her now from a random corrupted mythical chest. So... Uh, I could read her lore. Do I want to? Uh, I'll do it. Ever since she was a child, Camellia searched for the answers in the stars. She used her talent to help the Light Kingdom, but the answers about herself weren't up in the sky. It took bravery to understand her true identity could only be found inside. Once she had found the truth, she looked up again and saw more answers than ever. Today, she's the kingdom's royal astrologist. So, I believe canonically, in the saga, it, like, said she was... Uh, something in the LGBTQ plus community. It might have been trans, it might have been, like, pangender. Uh, I don't know. Not really important for the purpose of this video. Her trait is very... It's... It's... It's the epitome of decent. You see blind all the time, and that's why it's such a good thing that people like Elvira Demon Slayer have team immune to blind trait. So... It's quite nice, especially how someone could run Pierce with Angelic Gauntlet and just deny you. But she has an extra turn move anyway, so it's kind of, like, redundant. Immune to possession. Honestly, I would have said in a normal situation I would have rathered something like Abomination because that gives more. But now more is less because Abominations are hunted, so... I'll admit, though, I really thought she was a Celestial. Like, that was her trait. And Torture Immunity. This is absolutely fantastic, but it's only Status Caster. But she can reapply it, so it's pretty nice. She's in the Wielder's book. Um, that's a new book they added, kind of like Good Legions. It's a massive book. It's, <laughs> sorry. It's a massive book, so not that bad to have her at a high rank. Spirits, better spirits monsters, and then there's Royal Kingdom. So she might be one of your better Royal Kingdom picks. So I just, you see what I mean? She can reapply it, although that's not the move I was referring to. Cetus Master, an extra turn move on a one turn cooldown is really going to help you cycle cooldowns on any monster. So, boop, 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 just wasting all my food. So, Bright Andromeda. AoE stun, three turn cooldown, 48 stamina. The cooldown is alright just because she has an extra turn. Hydra Bless. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Hydra Blessing. Evasion and True Vision. As a denier, I quite like this, but I don't know if she can afford to run that many support moves. Would I rather Evasion and True Vision so my denier doesn't miss and she's protected, or Torture Immunity? So that she's immune to tortures, but she never misses. I'm gonna go Hydra Blessing. Uh, you tell me in the comments what you're running her with. And then Bright Links. Heavy damage. Nice. Mega Stun and Shock. I quite like that, so I'm just going to put that here. And then... Hmm, Crook's Counselor. So if I run Cetus... 3, 2, 3... Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to go Crux, just because I don't really have a good talent to make Cetus worth running. Because back in the day, what made her so OP was a special talent called Dispelling Fist. You could do an extra turn, and every time you hit an opponent, it would cleanse away their positive status effects. You had it twice. So you could cleanse away the Megaton, and then you could do an AoE stun, and it'd basically be, like, just like having Teddy Bomb on your team. It was pretty useful, um, because Megaton was really the meta back in those days. Really, though, Megaton has drastically falled off, fell off. Like, it was always Megaton monsters... Because there weren't too many great dodge area monsters. Like, you had people like Viatrix, you know? But these days, there's just nothing but taunt dodge area in the meta. So, I don't know. It wouldn't even be worth it if I had it, maybe. So, I think I'm going to go team speed. Because I don't have enough speed runes. Like, I don't want to buy her second slot. So, instead of trying to make her slightly fast. Because she's already a couple eras old. I think a team speed rune does her better. Her relics, good stamina regaining relics, especially how she does have rather high stamina cost. 
but yeah so for a beginner she's a lot better stun denier plus she's got shock daze evasion true vision and torture immunity she's a lot better of a denier than this new maze guy no, not me. It's race monster. Because, like, he's just useless. But she does allow me to do something very special. Which is... But, da -da, go back here to this bad boy. Do the Corrupted Rank Up Survival Dungeon. And this is actually fantastic for all three of them. Because at rank three, he becomes a Megaton monster. That's pretty great. He... I mean, he's really old, so he needs to be at a higher rank to even be usable. And then her, she's just kind of the reason I'm able to do it. Uh, not really anything special. So this is going to be... It's quite time-taking just because I don't have any attackers. I do have Quicksand and Shock. And literally everyone on this team has stun on their side. Mm, so it should be good, you know? Um... Sadly, they've got pretty bad sustainability, although both Earth Megaton monsters have sustainability. Like, you know, Pango's only got shield, so if Dots eat a little bit of his health, you're never getting that health back. And then, I'd rather Ollie Fanatic just apply a Megaton, because he can heal and give shields. But, the trait will always be priority. As I was saying, there's a small cut there. The trait will always be prioritized, Megaton-wise, over the um, status caster. Because usually, if you... Okay, so let me explain. If you have two Megaton monsters, it'll make the enemy attack whoever has more health. So that's pretty useful, right? But if you have a trait Megaton and normal Megaton, it'll hit the trait first. And then once the trait is dead, then it'll go past it. So it would be a pretty bad idea to have a trait Megaton monster like King Autumn and a Megaton monster like Hornroot. Um, those are both newer examples. I don't really know why I chose them. Um, but you never really will use two Megaton monsters. I know back in the Corrupted era... Bruh. Ads. Alright. I'm sorry about that, but I am not going to cut that out. So it's just that little ad, you know. No free clout, though. Nobody going to download that game. Nobody. Alright, so apply 50% shield. And then, this would be a really great spot to have that true vision. But she doesn't have enough stamina right now. Because look, it would have hit him if she had true vision. True vision is basically the only thing that means guaranteed hit. Anything other than that, there's the chance that it misses. Recharge, recharge. Can I pull this off? Why as a pierce monster? No, okay, you didn't have pierce yet. Do, 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 stun you. Um, well, actually, you're not even the biggest threat without Pierce, so I don't really need to take care of you first. So, boom, kill. Right, I think I'm gonna lose my Pango here. Rays of Hope, Growing Flesh. If Growing Flesh had regeneration, I think it'd be a lot more usable. So, Ivory Wall, Megaton, 30% shield. Alright. Oh, I'm gonna apply the True Vision. Then I'm going to go for the Mega Stun. Mega Stun plus Shock, you see, it both lands. Quicksand, lucky that landed. I don't know if there's a next wave, but if there is... Look, you see, he can heal himself. Pretty useful. I don't know if there is a next wave on this one. So I'm just going to play it safe and not waste the finisher. Um, That should kill him on its own. Mud Bath and second wave. Alright. Loving and caring. Shock plus sunburn. Alright, that's pretty good. Apply the Megaton. He doesn't have any damage mirrors, so there's no downside to attacking him. Which does, like, basically give the enemy a reason to just take out your Megaton monster. Which is quite annoying, but it, you should be fine. And then quicksand. Those are some pretty hard dots to live through. Stun to all. Peanut energy, 50% shield. You don't have Megaton anymore, though. Uh, you applied a phobic shield or whatever. Alright, oh, you see, this is where that torture immunity would have been nice. Alright, and I think you die here. Right. Is there a third wave? 
No. Okay, thank goodness. I think that was only number three. Wow, pretty low. Um, don't worry though. They are not. Well, they are pretty weak, just because they're they have no good team synergy. Darn. Why does it always do this? But I am upgrading all of my temples, so in time they'll be high level too. Cause like, look, Earth Temple and Electricity Temple are being upgraded. By tomorrow, they'll all be at level 85. Although, I don't know if food-wise I can afford that. But that does bring me to this. Cherub Cupid can now go to level 85. Which, I think I'm gonna do it. I don't know if I have enough food. Psh, okay, just, really, just barely. Wow. So, just gonna get some more food, like this. I'm going to use not Vada Boom. I used him because I didn't want to get any more um, XP because I didn't need any more. But instead of Cherub, since he's already at 85, I'll use her because she can get leveled up. So this way, because, you know, you can't just do these infinitely. They won't always give you the first time. Okay, so look. you get this much XP, that much gold, and this much food for beating it the first time. And then I use all this food to feed them, right? But you won't be getting that infinitely, so you want to make sure you already have a good flow of food. So that's why I've been upgrading my farms. But another important detail is that if you just play matches, like, not matches, if you do the adventure map with monsters, you will get XP just for it. Look at how much. I just saved 30,000 food right there for free. And, you know, that's why it's always been a strat for me to just when i was low on food and when i'm upgrading my farms you know getting more mythicals so that i can afford more food because there's a certain point where once you have enough mythicals the food becomes cheap because you're just oh look here's another thousand gold per minute and here's another 500 gold per minute so eventually it'll be like no problem but for these moments when you're running out of food as a beginner this is a really easy and helpful thing to do right here so i'm really close to getting all my monsters above level 100 and i'm really happy about that because the second you're above level 100 and you're just getting monsters above rank one with the rank up survival dungeon you're in pretty good contendership for the meta so double damage hatred dust kind of overkill wait how is it i thought that was earth damage no 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 her normal aoe is earth damage not her finisher that's magic so look, Cherub Cupid is already maxed out at 85. He's still at rank 1, so he can't get as high as these guys. Uh, these guys can't get all the way high, because I think I just started upgrading the Magic Temple right now. So as of now, Shiv can only get to level 100. Once she's past that, she can get higher than that. Which does bring me to more good news. Teddy Bomb. I've been using a pretty... Mm, not good but not bad skill set for teddy bomb because you need to rank him up to get his good moves right so right now he can peak at 100 the second he gets at over 100 i get his special moves i like dragon city and candy cane hit our first after that are the other two those are pretty fantastic i love to see it because like once i have his meta skill set things are gonna get a lot more easy He's ranked up, so he'll be faster. It's it's just fantastic all around, you know? And look at that. In, like, what? Maybe five matches? No. Six matches? They're already two levels up. You know how much food I just saved like that? Probably over 60,000 now. No, oh, way over that. Wow. So, yeah, definitely a strategy I suggest if you're, like, struggling with food. So I'm just going to beat this island, and then I think I'll call it there for the video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like to let me know, let the algorithm know. Hey, this guy's got a crab army and I want in, you know. Um, hope you enjoy the content I make. <laughs> Bruh, two ads in one video, and I don't even get paid for it. Anyways, leave a comment. I always love to hear your thoughts and opinion. Um, would it be... 
what move do I run Camellia with? You know, because I'm just kind of stuck on that question. I just leave your thoughts, comments, anything down below. I always love to hear your comments. And subscribe to join the Crab Army. We have just hit 88 subscribers. We're climbing like one per day. That's so awesome. So feel free to join the Crab Army. Feel free to tell your friends, but not too many people. And yeah. Uh, I can't cut out yet because I'm still doing this little bit. I can't just not complete an island, you know? Especially just cut it off on the ninth node. People would be mad about that. Surprise gift. Gave him Bane. Victory. Alright. So that's about that. I got my food back. I'm definitely going to have to feed a lot of my monsters up. Because look, now he can go to 95. And she can go to 85. So a lot of stuff I'm going to be working on. Keep myself busy. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a great day. And that's about it. Your favorite Omnius Crab, signing out.